What I'm looking for in an audition is, uh, do I believe the actor, do, that these are their words? Mm -hmm. um, do they make the scene work? You know, if, I mean, for, uh, for a director, if, I mean, you'll, you'll be sitting there and you'll go through so many auditions where you start questioning the script. Oh. <laughs> you know, like, is, this, is this really going to work? Is this like... Uh, and then someone will come in and you know, typically at the end of the day and, and you're worn out and they come in and they suddenly make the scene work. And you're like, I want to work with that person. So we're here in L.A. sitting down with Emily in Paris director, Peter Lauer, and he's going to give us some inside tips um, for actors. And so if you are an actor, then this video is for you. Thank you, Peter, for sitting down with us. My pleasure. Um, I know before you were telling us you were going over to Paris to work on this project. Now that project is out, and it is a huge success. Um, how was it working on that project? Uh, it, it was amazing working on the project. From every, literally from the moment that I got the call to do it uh, until this ridiculous response that it's had, um, it's... Yeah, it's been a dream, I just, I, and 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 now you know, hopefully, you get to go back and do more. So I'm very excited for it. Yeah, it was a very uh, funny show. I watched all the way through. You you directed episode nine and ten, was it? Yeah. And so that would be the uh, the season finale as well. They left us with a cliffhanger. You can't tell us anything. I'm about, about four cliffhangers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was. <laughs> There's a. I think a lot of guys mixed in there. We're not yeah, sure yeah. who it's she's like going to be fight. with, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember if it was episode nine or ten. But one of my favorite uh, moments in there. This was inside like the headquarters or the office, and uh, the, the the two guys that she works with. I can't remember their names in the show, but they were like, "We will never leave you. We will never do anything." And then, oh, and then the boss then walks by, the yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and does that. And I just kept thinking, I wonder, you, did you, how far did you direct him into that moment, or did they come up this all oh, on their own? Oh, a lot. Own? I mean, it was, the, it was, it was actually it was designed to be a split screen initially. Oh. Where you're gonna, you're gonna see uh, Sylvie, Sylvie coming out of her office and shutting the door at the same time. These guys run from the desk. Yeah. Um, we actually, sh we, we shot it, you know, parallel that way. Um, didn't wind up being cut that way, uh, but the, uh, yeah, it was. I mean, they were totally into it. I mean, the, anything that those guys, th those two are such a, the whole cast, I mean, they just gelled. Yeah. But those two guys were a real team. Uh, they were a team on camera and they were a team off camera. Mm. And they were, you know, totally in, they're up for anything, as they all were. Yeah. You know, everyone in the cast was, um, and I, I you know, had mentioned to, to Lily and to, particularly to, to Philippine, who plays Sylvie, her boss, mm. up front. I really want to play around. I want to tr get options and v versions of scenes. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't have been more into that. I found myself laughing out loud um, a lot of times in that show. But the comedy's not super punchy. It's very, it's very grounded and yeah, the situational so. humor there. Um, any particular moments that stood out to you uh, on the set that you that you liked or playing around with? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, just the, just the the protocol of being on a French set is different than an American set. A French crew, there, there's about a half an hour of everybody kissing everybody. <laughs> as they as they come in before they can get to work and having their you know having their uh, pain au chocolat and their their uh, you know their cafe and so there's a, there's a, there's a it, it's a it's a different pace uh, and a different uh, courtesy that exists hmm. you know it's really lovely really so, wonderful so they pl actually played that up in the show I guess in a couple episodes they're like oh you guys kiss a lot and in actuality oh, they, they do. do kiss a lot <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. How, how how does improv work for you on a, on a set like that how much is improvised um, or if any, not much on that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were, which also I mean that, that could be a cultural thing as well. I mean the the, the written word is is uh, you know, why, why mess with it if you can make it work. Will you improvise or have actors improvise in an audition scenario, or how do you work with them no. maybe in an audition? Um, I, I I don't improvise in an audition. If I, if I use improv, it's usually to build up a pre scene beat. Mm. Or I was just talking about this with the class that I teach yesterday. The, um, there are shows where I've done the pilot where we've done some improvisation with the actors to d establish their relationships. Um, in particular, I did, a, I did a, a show years ago called Strangers with Candy. With, uh, it, was, it was written by the, the cast, wrote it. It was um, Amy uh, Sedaris, Stephen Colbert, and Paul Dinello. So they were always around. We were always together setting the show up. And we went to... Uh, we, we would go to a, a location to, to lock a location in, and they would be there. So we'd like we would just we'd, we'd try some scene work in uh, on location or back in the by the writers' room or whatever, um, where they would play each other's characters, 
or they, or we would take the characters and put them in, in situations that aren't that don't exist in the scripts, just to kind of establish, you know, what would happen if this character and this character met at a concert. So as far as notes, notes for actors in the audition room, do you do you give them often? Do you not give them at all? Uh, I always do. If I mean, if if I mean, typically in an aud auditions, you're always running late, so. I mean, if I see something that I like, I will always give a note. I'll, I'll always just t you know, just, just to test something, to try it out, to see if 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 the actor is uh, is able to turn a note around and incorporate it, you know. Um, but also, you know, for other reasons. But I, and what I'm looking for in an audition is, uh, do I believe the actor do, that these are their words? Mm -hmm. um, do they make the scene work? You know, if, I mean, for uh, for a director, if I mean. You'll, you'll be sitting there and you'll go through so many auditions where you start questioning the script. Oh. <laughs> you know, like, is, this, is this really going to work? Is this like... Uh, and then someone will come in and you're typically at the end of the day and, and you're worn out and they come in and they suddenly make the scene work. And you're like, I want to work with that person. Mm. You know, it's just... You know, everything for me goes back to, to script analysis. And I think for me and for actors, very important because if you don't understand the scene, yeah. how are you going to make it work? You know, you might get lucky. You might be able to write a, write a, uh, you know, a, a, an attitude or something that kind of works good enough, right? Or just be a type that works good enough. But if you really, I mean, to really understand the nuances of a scene, you've got to do some, uh, you got to do some script analysis, and then of course, forget it somehow as you, are trying to be in the moment. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's what's uh, hard about comedy. I guess there there are these technical elements to it that you still have to merge with being in the moment. Yep. and um, having it be organic, but but there's also certain beats you have to hit and certain tones and certain pacing and well, with comedy, there's, lot, there's lots of little tricks like uh, you, you understanding when you're when when you're playing a mislead. That happens a lot, and a lot of people don't get it. The misleads where you're you're you're, you're setting something up and you flip it. Yeah, you know, you, th you you think a line is lead is is leading to this place, and at the end of the line, it, it just totally negate you totally negate that happens constantly in comedy it's there's mm -hmm. misleads all the time writers can't they can't seem to stop themselves from writing misleads uh, as jokes and if you don't get that if you don't play them if you don't play the misdirect if you don't if you don't if you don't set it up as if you're gonna you're gonna finish it off over right. here and then switch if you're not setting it up right then it doesn't work you know it's knowing that in the blueprint originally it's like the writers have already got the comedy in there it's up to the actor to find it to know it and to yeah. be able to execute that in order for it all to play which is of course the other, another thing they look for in an audition notes: Do I believe the actor? Are they making the scene work? Do they get the jokes? Are they listening? You know, listening is very important. You know, just waiting to say your line. You're you're act you're actively listening. You're actively playing. You're still you're still playing the moments and what and your objective while you're the other guy's talking. You know? Right. It's a it's a juggling act that uh, actors have to master. Yes. <laughs> Should actors be off booking in, in an audition? They should be. Dressing like character in the audition mean anything to you? No, it's like I just wouldn't dress un, you know, markedly unlike the character. Right. There's obviously the 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 jokes that are in the script. Actors that come in and add something. Does that stand out? Is that good? Or is yeah, it, it's is great. It, 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 it it's great. Uh, um, it's it. it you always you're, you always want somebody to bring something special to the party, something unexpected mm -hmm. to a role. At least I do. But um, that said, I always want to be cautious that they're not clowning. Yeah, it's like you know, put this phrase that people use all the time is you're putting a hat on a hat. You don't need to over. You know, mm -hmm. Don't try to out funny the funny is another phrase that one hears in comedy. Yeah. What are the other comedy rules? Uh, there's nothing. This is. My, one of my favorites from Woody Allen. There's nothing less funny than an actor who's trying to be funny. You know, if you're talking, hat on the hat. Hat on the hat. Um, I think there's some. There, there's definitely something to pace. You know, not not always. There's sometimes it really works to slow slow a moment down. Yeah. But generally, picking up the pace, keeping the cues tight works. And my theory on that is because is because you, the audience doesn't get a chance to get ahead of it. Yeah. You know, if the audience can see what the punchline is that's coming then it's not funny. It's like telling the same joke twice. Can you give us an example of, of a time where you saw an actor maybe in, in the audition room and you just maybe did know that that was an actor that you wanted to work with? Oh, yeah. Um, 
the, what comes to mind, because I've talked about her recently, a uh, wonderful actress named Willa Fitzgerald, uh, an audition for the series Younger, and she was a guest, it was a guest role, and um, she's playing a kind of a, a sociopath socialite who has been involved in a murder and, and got away with it, and the, and the story was turned into a podcast that went viral, kind of like Serial or something like that. Mm-hmm. And now everybody wants her book. Everyone wants her, wants her to write, tell her story. So, so she and her agent are pitching her book to a, a group of editors in, in a publishing house, which is the situation of this series, Younger. And she's there, and she's being introduced by her agent. So for the first 30 seconds or so of the scene, in the audition scene, uh, she doesn't say a word. It's just him talking about her. And she's given herself eye lines for the various people sitting around the table. Mm. And before she ever spoke, I wanted to cast her because she was, she was listening so actively. She obviously had, had given herself lots of images and lots of, she had built a reality. So everything he said about her, she, you, could, you could see it bounce off of her right. mind. And you know, uh, she had built a whole experience for this actor. Yeah, I guess that you knew where you were working with a good actor. Because I think that you can hide behind some dialogue sometimes, right? Or that's oh, like yeah. the on time. But right. if an actor is able to sit and have nothing but their thoughts, you know they've done the work. They can't oh. hide it, right? They can't fake it. Any advice for an actor? I, I would just say to actors that if, you know, it's such a treasure for someone like me to see somebody come in to an audition and make the scene work. I mean, the reason the scene was chosen was because it reveals aspects of a character. That's the reason it's there in the audition. So it's it's your opportunity to reveal different aspects of the character, not just go in there and, and you know play play one note or a couple of notes, or but to find opportunities to reveal other aspects of the character. Mm -hmm. And when someone does that and they're making the scene work and they're telling the story, it's just like you want to work with that actor. Peter, thank you so much for sitting down with us Pleasure. today. That was awesome. Really beneficial for, for the actors out there trying to uh, do this as a career and get onto these big sets. If you guys haven't checked out Emily in Paris, go do that. It's a great show. You guys will um, you guys will love it. And you can we'll skip the first eight episodes. <laughs> I'll skip the yeah. Just go right to just go <laughs> just right to nine and ten. It's the a good bunch ones. of travel. Yeah, on. the best ones. <laughs> um, so go check that out. And uh, for more uh, videos like this, like and subscribe.